Welcome to Hard Talk with me, Zainab Badawi, in New York. My guest in this rare interview is the Foreign Minister of Iran, Javad Zarif, who's on a visit here. Tensions between the United States and Iran have been at a historic high. President Trump said he was 10 minutes away from war with Tehran following recent tensions in the Persian Gulf. And what about the Europeans? Can they save the historic nuclear deal after President Trump unilaterally withdrew from it? Foreign Minister Javad Zarif, welcome to Hard Talk. The British Foreign Secretary, Jeremy Hunt, says that there is a small but closing window to save the nuclear deal agreed in 2015 between Iran and the world powers. Is he right? I think he is right, but it requires uh, committed determination uh, on all sides uh, to save this deal. Iran has implemented its part, of the, its part of the deal, and it is necessary for the rest of the world uh, particularly for the three Europeans, to also uh, take action. Uh, they made very nice statements, but statements do not provide economic benefits for Iran. Let me just tell you what uh, leaked documents have told us about at least the UK position about the US withdrawing from the deal last year. Sir Kim Darroch, who has just stepped down as British ambassador to Washington, said that Trump's got an incoherent and chaotic policy on Iran and that the US is set upon an act of diplomatic vandalism seemingly for ideological and personality reasons because it was President Obama's deal. To what extent have these leaks affected the dynamics in all of this? Has it made Iran feel encouraged to try to exploit differences between the US and Europe? Well, we, we believe that this deal is in the interest of the international community, including the United States. It doesn't matter whether the previous administration in the United States uh, negotiated this deal. Uh, this is a deal that was negotiated by the United States because, as you know, uh, in the international community, you don't recognize this or the other government. You recognize the country and the government of that country. And we did negotiate this with the government of the United States, and the government of the United States should abide by the commitments. There wasn't a revolution in the U.S. Uh, last I checked. So I, I believe that it is for President Trump uh, the best deal possible. I believe President Trump is being advised mm -hmm. by people who are not interested in promoting peace, but interested in, the, in advancing an agenda that they've had. Just sticking with the European point, does, do you feel emboldened now to try to exploit the differences between Europe and the US? I mean, the Europeans have said consistently it was a matter of huge regret that the United States withdrew unilaterally from the nuclear deal. Uh, I believe it's, uh, it's important to make that statement, but at the same time it's important uh, to basically invest in what Europeans believe is a security document for them and is a security agreement for them. You cannot make any gains without basically making the necessary investment, and I think that is what's lacking. We have invested in the nuclear deal, more than talking. We have done things on the ground. The Europeans are not prepared to do things on the ground. They're willing to make like statements what? like purchasing our oil. Foreign Minister, with the US sanctions on Iran, the, the Europeans cannot buy Why not? American oil Why not? because Tell it's me. going to affect their companies. If the Europeans, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Russians, try all of them to not allow the United States to bully them into abiding by its decisions, would the United States be able to destroy global economy and put sanctions on all of them. Let's take it Shell, Total, any uh, Sinopec, all of them at the same time. Disregard this 
demand by the United States, which is illegal, it's not unlawful. Going to, it's not going to happen. I mean, Natalie Tocci, who's advisor to Federica Mogherini, the European Union foreign policy chief, says the deal could be saved if there was US compliance, but this is not a likely proposition. So the Europeans' position is to try to strengthen what they call INSTEX, which is this framework through which the sanctions could to some extent be circumvented, especially allowing Iran to receive humanitarian aid, medicines and so on, which are exempt under the U.S. sanctions. Do you have any faith so that you this to, would work? Do you, you have any faith in it? You want to accept U.S. predominance in, in, in global economy, even to your own detriment. Well, I'm just I, telling I you think, what the Europeans say. Uh, the, uh, uh, unfortunately, this, uh, this is what they're saying, and I do not think this way they can resolve the, uh, this crisis or any crisis. The Europeans and the rest of the global community are strong enough to withstand this. There is no need to try to circumvent it. But if they want to circumvent it through INSTEX, we have to see whether there is any actual benefit for the Iranian people. You see, the people are dying from cancer. People are dying, kids are dying from EB. People are dying from MS. Just because there are a very limited area of uh, pharmaceuticals that we cannot produce in Iran and the United States the, yeah. uh, the United States says that they are yes, exempt from sanctions they are exempt but, but financial transactions in order to purchase them are not exempt uh, of course the, the Americans say they are exempt but they're not all right exempt. so you've given the Europeans 60 days again until early September to try to come up with some kind of way out of this to mitigate this impact of sanctions no, we, on the we Iranians. haven't given them any ultimatums. What we did was, for an, for an entire year, they asked us for a few weeks. We gave them about 60 weeks. And then we started, based on the agreement, not outside the agreement, the United States, as you know, walked out of the agreement. But we used the mechanism within the agreement in order to show them that they need to come back to the agreement and implement it. So we're not giving anybody any ultimatums. We are just implementing what we told them very transparently, that these will be the steps that we will take. Under the, the, the nuclear deal, Iran is only allowed to enrich its uranium to 3.67. We now know that uh, you are enriching uranium beyond that to around 4.5. So. Why do this? Because it doesn't help the Europeans make your case, does it, well, to the Americans? Uh, we implemented the agreement fully. Uh, IAEA made 15 reports from the beginning, five of them after the US withdrawal, and all of them indicated that Iran was fulfilling its commitments fully. Unfortunately, the Europeans could not take advantage of these and just drag their feet. It won't it won't happen again. You know, Iran is a country with an old civilization. Uh, for us, the dignity of our people is extremely important. But why enrich the uranium, foreign minister? Because, because President Rouhani said on July the 7th, our enrichment level will no longer be 3.67. We will increase beyond this to as much as we want, as much as is necessary and as much as we need. And you know, the Europeans say no partial compliance is acceptable. Well, the Europeans cannot say partial or full compliance, whether it's acceptable or not. It's the deal itself. Paragraph 36 of the deal says that Iran or the other side, if we are not satisfied with the implementation of the deal by the other side, we can take some measures within the deal. That is in order to keep the deal surviving, to keep it from going totally dead. So will you continue to enrich levels of uranium? This deal was, was written based on total mistrust. Neither side trusted the other side. That is why we put everything in black and white. Very clearly stated that if we don't comply, what they can take, if we are the initial breakers of the deal, they can take measures. If they are the initial breakers of the deal, they can also take right, measures. So You've got to allay fears, haven't you, Foreign Minister? The um, Iranians, according to the British Foreign Secretary, Jeremy Hunt, he has said this week that Iran is a year away from developing a nuclear bomb. If, if Iran wanted to build a bomb, we would have built a bomb a long time ago. We could have built a bomb a long time ago. We do not want to build a bomb because we believe that a nuclear bomb will not augment our security. 
But if the Europeans are serious about a nuclear weapons free Middle East, there is somewhere else that they need to be looking, and that's Israel, where they have at least 200 nuclear warheads. President Trump said quite recently that he was 10 minutes away from war with Iran over the um, shooting down of the unmanned U.S. drone over what America says was international waters and the French President um, Emmanuel Macron agrees with that. You say no, it was over Iranian waters and so on. But do you accept that the U.S. doesn't want war? I accept that President Trump doesn't want war, but I know that there are people in his administration who are crazy for war thirst for war. John Bolton, the national security advisor. Who I, don't think, I don't think I need to mention him. President Trump himself has mentioned him. How do you assess the possibility, the likelihood of some kind of military engagement you between see, Iran and America? Yeah. You see, it's called Persian Gulf for a reason. It's next to our coast. We have almost 1,500 miles of coast with Persian Gulf. It's not the Gulf of Mexico. We're there we're protecting our uh, territorial waters. And if this drone had been shot in international waters over international airspace, why did we got to pick up the pieces? All right, so, well, as I told you, the Americans <laughs> and uh, supported by, as I said, President Macron say it happened over international well, waters. Well, was but President this, Macron well, around? Well, <laughs> they, that's had what their, we they had their intelligence. That's what we told him. Right. Oh, were you there? But, um, <laughs> we you are know, there. But there have been tensions in the Gulf. I mean, we've seen the recent tensions um, about, you know, the, the, the Norwegian and the uh, Japanese registered oil tankers, uh, which you have said Iran had nothing to do with, um, you know, the attacks on, on those tankers but the suspicion is by the United States and the United Kingdom and others that Iran was involved and we've also seen the uh, recent tensions between Britain and Iran over the seizure of Grace One, your, your vessel. What do you think the possibility of you stumbling into an accidental war in the Gulf are? Well, uh, again, uh, it's, it's the Persian Gulf because it's next to our borders. It's a body of water that Iran has uh, protected. Iran has maintained the security and freedom of navigation in the Persian Gulf and the Strait of Hormuz uh, for millennia. And we will continue to do that. We're the major power in that region. Those who have come to our region have not. Those who have come to Persian Gulf, brought their naval vessels to Persian Gulf, uh, are not uh, helping secure these body of waters. What do you think is the possibility or the likelihood of stumbling of course into there. some conflict. Of course there is a possibility of accident, but we cannot leave our own neighborhood. Those who have come up from outside have to decide why are they in that neighborhood and whether their presence in that neighborhood is helping uh, stability and security in that neighborhood. How high do you think the possibility of possibility, an accidental war I mean, we just, is? Uh, we, as, as President Trump has said, we were 10 minutes away from war, because had they taken measures against Iran, President Trump had been told that, we, that Iran will, would be taking measures in self-defense. What kind of measures would you have taken? Well, I'm, I'm not a military man, so I leave that to the military. Well, we've heard statements from Iranian authorities that there would be attacks on allies such as uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, Dubai if there were any military action against uh, Iran? Uh, you see, we don't take blind action. Anybody who's helping the United States in its war against Iran. The United States is right now engaged in economic war against Iran. Uh, there are countries that are providing the United States with uh, logistical support, with uh, reconnaissance. Uh, that means that they are participating in the war. So we're not... So that could happen. You could not, target uh, allies if, in if the Gulf. There, if there is a war... US allies. If there is a war then I do not think anybody will be safe in our region. But let us all try to avoid one. We don't need a war. We've gone through eight years of war, a war that was imposed on us with the help of everybody. But why not de-escalate the um, situation? Um, for example, the Grace One, which has been seized by British naval authorities. You've had a conversation with the British Foreign Secretary, Jeremy Hunt, and um, he said, you look, this vessel could be freed if it's not bound for Syria, it's that kind of action which, uh, I mean, which it's, the West find provocative. It's, it's piracy, plain and simple. But there are EU sanctions against no, selling no, no. oil to First Syria. First of all, 
there are EU sanctions against buying Syrian oils, not against selling Syrian oil. One. Yes, second, but going through EU, second, sorry, second, there are EU sanctions no, no, against no. selling oil to Syria there, for EU European sanctions. countries. For Euro from European yes. countries. Iran is not a but European country. But you were going country. near Gibraltar, which Iran is part is not of the a, EU. No, that, no, no, no. That's part of international shipping lanes. We were going through that. But we announced from the very beginning that this ship was not destined to Syria. Where was and it I, going And then? I told Jeremy, I'm not supposed to tell, I'm not obliged to tell anybody, the, this is international freedom of navigation. So there was oil on the tanker, obviously. Iranian that, oil. On Iranian the, oil. The tanker but is not Iranian. You not where it's going. The, the tanker is not Iranian. It was carrying Iranian oil, which we had sold, and it was going to, to a place in Mediterranean other than Syria. We made it clear. You know that we are under sanctions from the United States. Their uh, objective is to bring our oil sales to zero. That is why we will do whatever we can to avoid the United States knowing what we are doing. One so more was thing. it oil one going more to more Turkey, perhaps? One, one more thing. One more thing. The United Kingdom, by... Uh, taking our ship by confiscating our ship is helping the United States imposing its illegal oil sanctions against Iran. It's nothing about e EU sanctions against Syria. It's about Iran. That is why John Bolton thanked Great Britain for giving them the best 4th of July presence possible. So you think so Britain if, is if doing UK, America's bidding? If the UK wants to serve U.S. interests, they should not be talking about trying to preserve JCPOA. All right, but the fact of the matter is, as I said, is that your issue over the nuclear deal is with the United States. Why not renegotiate? You have Why said, we pres renegotiate? well, President Rouhani said um, just a few days ago that if the sanctions are lifted, then if you avert the sanctions, then Iran will return to the negotiation no, table, not, is what he said. We did not leave the negotiation table. It was the United States that left the negotiation okay, table. Okay, he said, avert your sanctions and return to the negotiating they table to, return, to, to they America. They have to return to the negotiating table. But does that table. mean you will renegotiate We will not renegotiate. We will not renegotiate. But, but why not? You see, this deal was the subject of 12 years of negotiations, two years of which were intense negotiations. I spent days, month negotiating this. We spent a lot of time with the United States negotiating this deal. It's about give and take. Any deal, but my friend. But you've got to break the deadlock, Foreign break, Minister. Yeah, but but, my but if you, allow, if you mm. allow a bully to bully you into accepting one thing, you'll encourage him to bully you into accepting right. other things. We negotiated this deal. We did what we were supposed to do. The U.S. did not do what it's supposed sure, to do. Sure, you've made that The point. United States is working on the policy line that what's mine is mine, what's yours is negotiable. All right. Iran, but how do Iran you break will the not deadlock, do it. though? Mike Pompeo, the U.S. Secretary of State, has set out some clear um, issues that he wants addressed as part of any, in the Americans' view, future nuclear deal. Um, the way Iran they say, and the British and the Europeans support them, destabilizing influence in the region through your support for Hezbollah in Lebanon to the tune, he says, of $700 million a year. The Houthi rebels in Yemen, the Bahrainis complain about your support for, for you know, anti-government movements there. I could go on and on. And you say, look, we're not doing any of this, but the Americans believe this. How can you go back to the table, discuss these things, say, look, you're accusing us unfairly, but go back to the table and reopen these issues with them. You, know, you see, the problem is they left the table. And they're the ones who are supposed to come back to the table by starting to basically fulfill their own obligations. But let's, let's just address the questions that you just raised. Mm. Did we support Saddam Hussein when uh, he attacked Iran? Did we support ISIS? I mean, President Trump himself said Iran is fighting ISIS. Are we bombing the Yemenis? Did we invade Yemen? Did we, was it Iran that uh, basically arrested the Prime Minister of Lebanon and kept him in prison sure, but where for, does this for three take weeks? You, so if Minister? the United States, if the United States is looking 
for the, those responsible for malign behavior in the region, they, uh, the okay. United States needs to look at its own allies. Are we even, are we even Talk present? Talk to them about are this. Talk even, to them about this and say, look, we will reopen the will negotiations talk? with a new nuclear deal and take, meet them and President talk Trump, about this. President Trump has said that I am not engaged in military war against Iran. I'm engaged in economic war against Iran. What does it mean to be engaged in economic war? Economic war targets civilians. Military war targets military personnel. Civilians are sometimes collateral damage. But an economic war targets civilians. The United States Secretary Pompeo has said that we want the Iranian people to change their government. So putting, wow. these, putting these two together, that means that the United States is terrorizing Iranian people in order to achieve political objectives. That's the classical definition of terrorism. The Americans have said consistently, and Mike Pompeo is their goal is not regime change, he says, we want to change Iran's behavior so it behaves like Mike a normal Pompeo, country. Mike Pompeo, That's what he has said. Iran, Iran is a normal country. The country right. that is not normal is the United States. Right. Which normal country violates every international agreement? INF, right. NAFTA, uh, the Paris Climate Convention, right. UNESCO, Human Rights but Council. Now, is, that, is, that, w w is that what you call normal? Let me put to you, though, you've said your country is suffering from the sanctions. When you give organizations like Hezbollah hundreds of millions of dollars a year, Who keep these people... Who said we give them well, hundreds that's what of Mike millions Pompeo of said. Mike Pompeo, keep the money for your Mike people. Pom Mike Pompeo may like to make <laughs> statements. Right. You see, Mike Pompeo's allies in our region, Saudi Arabia, spend $67 billion a year on, on military equipment. They are bombing the Yemenis. Are we doing that? We only spent $16 billion last year on military, entire military budget. All right, then there's the case of the British Iranian woman, Nazanin Zaghari Ratcliffe, who has been in prison for three years in Iran. You have said that you're sorry that she's in prison, separated from her daughter, and that you have talked about in the past of a possible prisoner swap between um, the United States, which is keeping some Iranian um, prisoners, as well as a, a woman in Australia. Um, you've said that Nazanin has gone through due process of law in Iran and so on. But can I ask you this? Could she be released soon on compassionate grounds? Well, you see, that's not a decision for me to take, but that is a, an ideal situation for which I have tried and I will continue to try. But, but let's put Compassionate grounds to compassionate get her released grounds, but, but let's put it this way. She went through the legal process. We have people in, in Europe who are being extradited to the United States for violating the sanctions that Europe does not recognize. That Europe sure. does not recognize. I was just asking you about Nazanin Zaghari yeah, Ratcliffe's yeah, case but, but, because but, her health is, is suffering and her mental health is also a great concern uh, you see, to her I'm not, family. I'm not she happy went on to, hunger see, strike. to see a single individual in prison. And I'll do my best to, to address that to the, to the uh, maximum of my capacity and my cap capability. But as foreign minister, I am responsible for the conduct of foreign affairs of the country. Right. And she's an Iranian citizen. Finally and briefly, what would it take? to find a way out of this impasse, some kind of face-saving deal for both you in Iran and the Americans to give some impetus and progress to the deadlock we have now? Well, we don't need to have a deadlock. We do not want to embarrass anybody. We believe all we want is what we negotiated and should implement it, and then we can go even further. I believe our region has enough real problems. We don't want imaginary problems. Could you renegotiate the deal from scratch with the Americans? Yeah, nobody can. If you had a waiver to I the mean, sanctions. Let me, let me tell you. If you had a waiver to no, the no, sanctions. Let me, let me tell you. I negotiated this deal. I know that it's impossible to get a better, better deal. I know that who, anybody who was involved, anybody who was in the room will tell you that it is impossible to get a better Even deal. if you could sell some oil to China and India, there was a waiver that allowed you to do that we under will, the US sanctions. Continue. Could that be a step we will forward? We will continue to sell our oil, but we will not sell our dignity. Foreign Minister Javad Zarif, thank you very much indeed for coming on Hard Talk. Good to be with you.